In this video, I'm going to share some of the uh, research I've done over the past two weeks to get uh, PX4 running with the Maytech H743 Slim. I chose this for a couple of reasons. One, it's uh, lightweight, it's relatively affordable, less than $100, and it has a CAN bus port. And the CAN port is uh, important because I've been working to uh, get a good position hold set up using the ArtFlow sensor, which uses drone can. And this video is going to walk through just my findings as it relates to uh, getting everything up and running with PX4. So here is a outdoor flight test. I have quite a bit of vibrations that I learned uh, related to the accelerometers. So I'll be working through that, but 10 to 12 mile an hour winds with a small 250 frame. So right now I'm really impressed with the performance, but there were a lot of things I had to dive into uh, related to getting this to work. PX4 currently has a fairly limited support for the Maytech STM32 H7 boards. There are several variants and uh, thankfully, Due to the hard work of many of the PX4 developers in the community, I was able to uh, hack my way through this and want to uh, share some of the findings. So this is the actual photo of the STM32 H743 and the VI H6. I wanted to understand uh, what this, I guess, nomenclature represents. So real quick, I'm going to walk through that. So uh, if you look at this DigiKey link, some great information. The STM32 is a family. The H represents high performance. The uh, 7 represents it's based off the ARM Cortex M7. And the 43 is actually uh, the line, and that represents uh, the certain peripherals and speed that the uh, microcontroller can run at. It can run up to 480 megahertz. So, with that covered, the H743 part, let's look at the VIH6. The V rep represents uh, the number of pins on the microcontroller. The I represents the amount of flash memory. So you can see the max amount here, two megs. Then we have H and six. The H represents that it's a ball grid array for surface mount. And then six is the operating temperature of the microcontroller, a minus 40 to 85 degrees Celsius. The next thing that I was up against is uh, the board version. So I'm currently using the 743 Slim version three, and you'll notice that uh, there are several different uh, options as it relates to the version. So V3 has two uh, IMUs, and it turns out in my scenario, uh, the ICM 42688P, it's an Invensys IMU. And so what I had to do was uh, look at the configuration. And the reason was I was curious as to uh, the orientation of these uh, chips. So let's take a look here. You'll notice the little reference points or reference dots on each of these chips. You'll see that they're both the I428P uh, variants. and if you look at the actual board, here we have what appears to be uh, both chips in the uh, current configuration. But the difference here is that this bottom one, which is referenced here, is not the 42605. It is the 42688P. So uh, that was actually something I discovered during the process. And there was a, a commit to PX4 that makes use of that. And I want to uh, show what that looks like. I currently have the latest uh, main pulled from the PX4 Autopilot repo, and there's so many commits and uh, pull requests related to this. I apologize if I'm not giving attribution to the specific developer that worked on this, but can say thank you uh, to the team for adding support uh, for this IMU. You can see here, this is the driver that's specified uh, for the IMU and looking at the rc.board sensors, you'll notice a, a bit of logic here. It says, hey, if we can find uh, this first IMU, we'll go ahead and start it with this specific rotation. This is on SPY1. You'll notice here it says V3 board. 
here we have it again, a different one on SPY4 with the V3 board. It has a, a different orientation. Once again, if you look at these uh, photos, you can see that while it does have both IMUs, they are oriented differently. So this uh, configuration actually works quite nicely. So both of these uh, drivers get started and I'm able to uh, see data for both of them. I did a video that covered this previously with the Holy Bro Kakute H7. I had to use the STM32Q uh, programmer with the Matec board. And I've gone ahead and connected the Matec board with the uh, reset button pressed down and that gets us into the TFU mode, the direct firmware update. Now, technically you should be able to use command line tools. I was unable to get that to work. So that's why I'm using the Q programmer. And what I do with the Q programmer, I select the uh, USB port. When we're in DFU mode, I'll click connect. And we want to uh, basically erase everything. So I'm gonna do a full chip erase. Go ahead and confirm that. And while that's happening, the next thing that I'll do is make sure that we get the uh, bootloader built because that is what we're going to uh, load onto the board. So I believe that is the uh, Make Matech H743 Slim Bootloader. Once I get, again, I'm running the current main. I think it's 1.15 uh, alpha. Yeah, you can see it here, 1.15.0 alpha. We'll go ahead and let this build. Okay, so we can see that it's built. I'll just double check my build folder. You'll notice that there's a slim bootloader directory and we have the uh, bin file. I'm back at the Q programmer. The next thing that I want to do is I'm still currently connected. We want to browse to the bootloader bin file. We'll go ahead and click start programming. That will be really fast. Now we have uh, the bootloader on the board. And the next thing we'll do is build the PX4 firmware and upload it to the board. We'll use the make with the Matech 8743 slim target. You can type Matech and actually tab a couple times and see what our options are. So 8743-slim, we'll do default. And then I also have unplugged the 8743 board, plugged it back in without being in DFU mode. So it's just a normal connection via USB. And what we'll do is we'll build and then we'll upload. So this has all of our uh, driver configuration uh, necessary, all of the proper settings and the build is currently happening. This this could you know take anywhere from three to four minutes on up. So I'll go ahead and let this run. And at the end, uh, we'll see the upload to the board happen. PX4 firmware has finished building and now it is being uploaded. With the firmware uploaded one thing that uh, I banged my head against the wall with is uh, this uh, SD card. Make sure that you have an SD card in your board, uh, reboot it, and then uh, connect. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues and you're not going to get a whole lot of feedback uh, or any feedback related to uh, why you can't connect. So after uh, inserting the SD card, then uh, you should be able to connect. Now, in this scenario, I'm using the uh, Mavlink shell. It's just a really quick way for me to uh, do a quick test on my uh, Ubuntu laptop. So that's where I've been doing all of the, the firmware loading. Of co course, you can uh, plug this in directly to any uh, machine that's running QRound control and you should be able to uh, connect and see data. Actually, I take that back. If you connect via Q ground control, you're going to have to manually set up uh, your COM port. It doesn't uh, connect automatically, but that's that's a, a another video. So uh, that being said, now I'm connected. Let's just do a quick top. I want to make sure that I see 
the necess necessary uh, services running. Everything looks uh, pretty good. Relatively uh, reasonable CPU usage. So the next thing I want to do is I'll just show um, some of the topics, the UORB topics, and let's just maybe take a look at the uh, vehicle IMU. So I'll look at this topic and let's just uh, echo this for 10 times with a rate of once per second. And so I'm, you know, moving my uh, Maytech board around. We can see values changing. That's probably not the best example. Let's do one more. Let's look at uh, vehicle attitude. And I have my board kind of held level. We'll notice I'm going to pitch forward with the board. We see a negative value. I'll pitch back. And now we're seeing positive values. So uh, everything's looking good. Obviously, once again, you can connect to QGround control, uh, do a quick check on your HUD, horizon, all that, make sure your uh, compass looks good, and, and then move on to your basic uh, vehicle setup. And let me wrap up the video with one last uh, hurdle I had to overcome, especially if you guys are uh, trying to follow along and actually get something in the air. You saw at the beginning of the video where I did a demonstration of position hold with ArcFlow uh, using the Maytech 8743 Slim. Uh, this is version 3. And what I ran into is I could not have UAV CAN enabled and get all four motor outputs. I was only getting output on motors 1 and 2. And looking here at the beta flight mapping, which I found is very similar to PX4, as you'll see timer three is associated with the signals one and two, this is motors one and two. And then uh, we have timer five with channels one, two, three, and four. So basically different timers for all these different signal outputs. If you look at uh, the timer config, you'll see that those match up with what is this defined in the timer config uh, C++ file. But uh, finally, what I ended up having to do, because I could not uh, sort my way through this, if we look at uh, the Ardu pilot mapping, you'll see the timer groups, similar to how they're grouped in beta flight, but instead of timer three for one and two, uh, Ardu pilot uses uh, timer eight. But all that being said, I could not, uh, override what timer was being used for UAV CAN. Uh, I, I tried timer six and some others based on what I read. And the short version of the story is uh, I went to this configuration and what you're seeing here is in my motor outputs or uh, actuator screen, I have uh, motors one and two assigned to main one and two, and then three and four assigned to seven and eight. And so this is where uh, UAV can and the PW input, the PWM outputs are uh, conflicting. And what that leaves me with is I use, as I mentioned before, motor output signal one and two in the standard port here. And then you'll see uh, three and four are mapped and wired to seven and eight. So that's just a really tricky thing that I discovered and I saw others were having similar issues. I could not find my way through it. I hope to understand how to fix that because I'd really like to contribute that back. But with all that being said, I'm excited about uh, what's to come and currently working on uh, getting uh, telemetry set up. I'm gonna be connected with Raspberry Pi and hopefully with this uh, small affordable lightweight little board uh, be able to do a position hold and programmatic flight. So thank you guys for following along. I know this was a long video. Just really wanted to uh, document uh, for my own benefit and maybe for others on what it took to get up and running. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.